Welcome everybody. This is today the second time we, we quickly meet in Kimberley, Paulette, uh, uh, Rue. Some of us, we were already here because the time was changed in the USA and by mistake we thought we have to gather one hour before and did not realize then in Europe that everything is the same. So USA just uh, running ahead us prophetically, maybe I don't know, uh, but this is the right time to together. Uh, God bless you all. Um, um, I am really even now, which is unusual. I'm really battling in my spirit. What should I teach? Because there are too many things I, I must share with you all. And uh, I cannot choose. And I feel like the Holy Spirit let me to just, uh, <laughs> just, I feel that freedom that the Holy Spirit giving me that, uh, shall I start with A or B, uh, but uh, let me just, uh, let me just start with, um, with something which I was teaching when I've been invited to a meeting, to a leadership meeting, and they asked me to share a couple of things on that leadership meeting i was uh, uh training leaders there and um, as i was speaking it's really uh um, disturbed me inside and uh and touched me inside as well so i feel maybe uh even though i have something new to share as well i feel the holy spirit is is really placed on my heart that you all need to hear that message as well so, so today we're going to speak about more a little bit of uh, leadership. Uh, how, uh, what is your responsibility if you became a leader, if you are a leader, or what is your responsibility if you already have somebody in your life who you call that leader? I hope uh, uh, all of you soon uh, will fulfill the second one. You will become leaders. You're going to lead something. But the first uh, stage, which is, I hope, uh, uh, somebody already in your life who's leading you, who's supervising you, who's mentoring you, because if you don't have that person in your life, uh, that means you are lacking something which is which is a kingdom principle, because uh, even the centurion says, I am under authority and there are people who's under my authority so jesus i cannot see any problem that the miracle should come true so when you are under authority uh, that means you are in the right place that's the kingdom mentality that's the kingdom order what jesus showed us and uh, we cannot leave that order uh okay um how do we start Jesus helped me to start. Uh, uh, right. Uh, let me see. If you are here and able, please turn on your camera. I need your faces for sure. If you can, if not, of course, uh, I understand that as well. Um, right, right, right. Okay. I see the right person, which is Rue. Rue, if you can unmute yourself, what was one of the first statement when we when we have started church in person in Rig, London? What was one of the statement which was a bit unusual, which was almost ruling our celebration feelings? What did I tell? in front of the church do you still remember yes i, I was scared you were going to ask me something i didn't remember <laughs> but um, you said that no matter what you kind of forewarning us that you are going to mess up you are going to disappoint us and basically for you for us to see and be prepared for the fact that although you are this amazing man of god you are also human <laughs> Thank you so much. I didn't say it this way, right? That I didn't say I am an amazing man of God. That was no, that was me. That, that, was, was, a, that was the rude, the rude version. <laughs> but I really been honored. Thank you so much, Ru. Uh, 
Uh, actually, she Ru was there on that leadership meeting which I, which I was holding not long ago. So what I said to my church, and I felt really the, the Holy Spirit joyful presence on that, I said to my church, uh, they were celebrating us as we, as we as we came back from Hungary on that time. We left Nigeria. We came back from Hungary to the to the UK. They were celebrating us. They were celebrating the Lord for the start for that where we are here. And I remember I said to the church, church, I I I am really enjoying the love. I'm enjoying the, you know the celebration of of yours as you were coming us as you feel us like we, we arrived home. But I said, I can't wait the time when I will, I will do some mistake in front of you. And I just want to see your reaction. That will be the real time when I know how deep is your love towards me. Of course, when I said this, I do some mistake, can't wait to do some mistake. Of course, I'm not thinking on a mistake which is against uh, Jesus. I'm not thinking on the mistake like, you know, I'm going to, I don't know, do some demonic stuff or, you know, don't go there. I'm not <laughs> saying that. But, you know, we all human beings and uh, we we can... We, we can do mistakes, which doesn't take us uh, uh, from the salvation, but uh, it can uh, make people uh, don't, not follow you anymore or just don't like you anymore or just, uh, just uh, block you on social media. You know, that's the kind of mistake I'm talking about. And I said to the church, I can't wait to the time when that happens because that will try uh, your love, that will try you more than me. Because when you do mistake, on your side, you have to humble yourself, you have to apologize people, you have to repent, you know, you have to do everything. That's, that's your side as a leader or as a person, as a husband, as a wife, as a mom, as a parent. But then your audience is being tested immediately as well. Are they going to stone you? Are they going to respect you? Are they going to cover you as Noe being covered by the two sons? Or are they going to watch you and they're going to tell the others that you are naked because you are drunk? So that's, that's how we started in London. And uh, I, I raised the bar for them. And I said, I love the fact how you loving me, but I want real relationships. I want real love. I want real anger. I want real sentences. I, I don't want artificial uh, uh, relationships. I, 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 if, you, if you think I did something, I don't want you to run anywhere but to me. And if you do something, I will run to you. And I can assure you, I will do mistake. You can you can stamp it. You can you can put it in the envelope. I will do mistake. I'm just a human, and uh, the reason I'm uh, I'm a, I'm your leader because I learned how to humble myself and how to correct myself when I did some mistake. That's the only reason I'm standing here. This is how I started. Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you because uh, I believe I believe. All of you here are already leaders or you are potential leaders. I really like the vision what Prophet Tommy has that uh, we should all try to start uh, home groups, rig X groups. And I really, really encouraging you to, to find a way and start uh, to do home gathering um, under the rig umbrella because I believe we going to the season. Well, the, the reason I'm struggling what to share because this evening around four or five o'clock morning, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and what he told me is, is still, I wanna speak about uh, that because that's a fresh revelation and, and is heavy on me, but I also have to share this. So I, I have to kind of, uh, uh, navigate between the two so anyway i feel the time is here 
to, to start to do home gathering, to try to do home groups, to try to activate yourself in your environment. Because I feel, and the Holy Spirit showed me yesterday a vision, that in this vision I was in a church. And as I was in the church, uh, in this vision I saw the worship band. And you know, you, you saw the keyboard player, you saw the bass uh, uh, player, you saw the drummer, and uh, uh, as I saw this vision, suddenly I felt the Holy Spirit is taking out one by one the musicians. And I, I suddenly in this vision disappeared the drummer, the bass player and all the band. And the Holy Spirit just asked me, would you be able to worship without any musician? And I, I was like, I said, yes, uh, I think so. I, I could, of course. And the Holy Spirit showed me the reason because there will be a time where, where you won't have any equipment. There will be a time when you don't have, won't be able to gather in a nice place, nice big place. But you might have to run from one house to the other house. You might have to run because persecution will come and you might all you can do quickly just grab a song and just sing by yourself and worship me without any musician without any band because the time will come when the 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 government and the, the society will turn against us and we cannot afford that comfortable way to worship always and let the let let the musicians to take us to the place but we have to create an atmosphere with our own voice even though it doesn't look it doesn't sound great maybe you have to create an atmosphere and worship the lord in any place and any time and as i as i'm in this vision the Holy Spirit showing me that you better start, we all better start um, under authority, of course, under ad ad leadership, start home gathering, home groups and learn how to make your place, your environment, uh, worship place, teaching place and, and dwelling place. And as a, anyway, that was just a fresh revelation. I cannot... I cannot go there for the full vision on prophetic word, what the Lord spoke to me, but um, uh, for that reason, it's very actual to start uh, with this teaching, which is actually give us a foundation how to become a leader, how to become a, a, a uh, how to come someone's authority and and how to follow somebody and how to make yourself to others to follow you as you follow Christ, of course. So let's start now and speak about leadership uh, uh, stuff. Uh, <clears throat> right. Um, I don't think so I can share everything what I shared on that leadership meeting training, but I can just share a glimpse of it. I mean, the, the, maybe the main points. First of all, I want to talk to you about Samuel, the prophet. Samuel is the first prophet in the Bible who started so well. He was a great prophet, uh, but uh, end of his life, when he got older, people refused his office. He's the first uh, prophet who is uh, actually bringing in a new office to Israel, which is kingship. He's the one who is actually facing the, with the fact that Israel refused a prophetic leadership and Israel is crying out for king. So he's the one who's actually there as a first prophet in this transition. And this is very significant. Because any time in the Bible, uh, the first appearance in the Bible, in the scriptures, any time is his first time is always a big secret and lesson to us to investigate. So I want to investigate both person the prophet the first prophet who being refused because that's what god says they didn't refuse you they refused me so they refused god and they refused the office office of the prophetic uh, governmental leadership 
uh, and also we have to talk about soul as well. Uh, right. Um, so in 1 Samuel 13, the Bible says, verse 8, um, and he went on waiting there for seven days. This is Saul when he's already a king. But uh, uh, let's speak about Saul. So Saul is a person, I don't know the population, the number on that time in Israel, but Saul being chosen from all out of all Israel. God, the first king whose, whose was in God's mind, in God's heart, it was Saul. That tells me Saul was very significant and outstanding person in whole Israel. Because he was the first uh, uh, above the others. And um, the fact that that Saul being chosen, it tells me that Saul started so well. Actually, in this stage, if, if we don't have any more scripture about Saul, in this stage, we could celebrate him and we could say, oh, he is the first king in the Bible, in, in, in the history of Israel. So he must be did something well that God chose him as a first king in Israel. Because uh, God never do mistake and surely the Spirit of God was the one who chose Saul. Uh, and and this, this is a great thing, but if you see the scripture, Saul actually failing and Saul is disappointing Israel and disappointing the Spirit of God as well. Of course, the Spirit of God knew what's going to happen, but still, uh, uh, Saul did something which actually made him a failure. Why am I saying this? Because all of you here started so well, including me. We all started so well because the fact that we are here, that means the Spirit of God is on us. We, we are getting trainings. We are sacrificing time. The Holy Spirit led us here to this group. Uh, and the reason I'm saying we did well, because I learned something in, in, in my running with Jesus. I learned something in my Christian running, in my Christian life. Nobody can come to Jesus unless given to him or her. That means you won't be able to come to this Zoom room if the Father did not permit you. The fact that you are here, trust me, you today you got permission from the Father. Because Jesus says, nobody can come to me unless given to that person permission from my dear Father. So the fact that you are here, that the Father thought that you are fitting in this group, you are ready for the training, you started so well, so you are ready for this spiritual experience, you are ready for the spiritual food. That's the only reason you could enter in this room. If that permission wouldn't given to you, you would click on the uh, um, on, on your computer everywhere and somehow you wouldn't be able to come here. You simply won't be able to join to this room. That's what Jesus said. Nobody can come to me unless given. So all of you given. That means we all started well. Now, Saul started so well. Because Saul being chosen by God, Prophet Samuel went to prophesy, they met, they proph he prophesied him. Even Saul was prophesying at one point. Uh, so he had a really strong starting and the reason he felt he didn't not he didn't understand leadership he didn't understand what does it mean under 
being under leadership and what does it mean being a leader that these two things if we don't understand no matter how how great we starting we're going to fail that means you could operate as a as a beginner christian so well but at certain stage when god is raised you up and you have to step to the office to be a leader or at certain stage when god is uh, allowing to in your life more responsibility and uh, uh, your your follow your leaders getting more difficult if you are not learning how to follow and how to lead doesn't matter how great you were, your starting was you're going to fail Saul started so well what he didn't understand that Samuel was his prophet. Samuel was the prophet who anointed him. Samuel was the prophet who actually brought him to the office of king, uh, kingship. Samuel was the one who introduced to Israel uh, 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 him as a king. Some, so, uh, so Saul didn't understand that Samuel is his first leader and because he didn't understand that he is his leader he started to do some silly things uh, and this is in the scripture in 1 Samuel 13 now the scripture says Saul he went and waited for seven days the time was fixed with Samuel but Samuel did not come to Gilgal and the people were starting to go away from him and uh, we are at the point right now we are at the point right now I tell you why because Saul didn't understand that Samuel is a human being he's a great prophet he can see in parts he can prophesy and thunders come he can do so many things with the spirit of god but he is a human being as well and now when saul is finally in uh, bef before his first battle now he and the prophet they agreed according to the agreement they should meet within seven days they fixed a time says the scripture samuel and saul they fixed the time this is the time when we're going to meet they have no whatsapp they have no messenger they have no instagram they couldn't call each other uh, so they had to rely on each other words if it's today i would just text ilonka ilonka please start i'm going to be one hour late she will know what to do but on his time thanks god for that because god is always uh uh giving you tests uh, according to the uh, actual time in his time there were no mobile phone so saul was waiting for samuel and they fixed a time and that time was set for seven days the seven days came and the prophet did not turn up we can't make it nicer prophet samuel was late this prophet promised i'll be there and he was not there let's not make it nicer than it is that was a late he was late now what soul didn't understand that even though samuel is a great leader he could be late he could do mistake uh, i have to be soul i have to be flexible to adjust myself to my leader and what soul didn't do he did not adjust himself to his leader he said okay if you're not coming no matter what with you or without you i will do it and that was the first time when he felt because when he did this 
actually he offended the principle, the kingdom principle. And suddenly when he when he do the burnt offering, of course Samuel turning up later and then you know the story, he's rebuking him and says, now because you did that, your authority won't be uh, 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 forever just for temporary. My message is today, God did not set you up to run a temporary race. God doesn't want you to start something and finish it uh, unwell. The, we are not here to, to do temporary things. Our authority cannot be and not stay temporary because God set up us for continuity until we not see him. We have to run so well. We cannot run and stop and fail because if we do that, we won't complete our mission. Now, uh, Saul, Samuel saying to Saul, now, okay, I was late, I get that, I didn't came in time, I get that, but what you did, it was really silly, because, because now you did that, the Lord actually is refusing you and the Lord is not going to establish your kingdom. Your authority won't be forever. In fact, the Lord is searching somebody. The Lord is already searching somebody. What is the lesson for us from this? The lesson is if you want to become a great leader, you have to be first a great follower. There is no great leader who did not learn how to be a great follower. Saul being anointed in his office, but still he had to be able to accept his leader latency and trust me, the the it wasn't a, a, a small things to wait uh, so, uh, the prophet because the the enemy was there the people were angry with Saul already so it everybody was shaking and anybody anybody was ready to fight uh, so Saul really had to make a decision to say okay no matter what I'm going to wait even if it cost us even if we die even if it is. So there are times when you have to say, even if it's costing me, even if it's hurting me, even people will look down me, I will, I will respect my leader, I will wait uh, for, for instruction. And this is, uh, trust me, this is very hard. This is extremely hard. Just this week, just this week, me and my wife made we made a decision uh after we spoke with our leaders about our decision with prophet tommy we said a he said no b opposite we had to adjust ourselves, our vision our thought we have to humble ourselves and say prophet you are our leaders we're going to submit Let's forget about A, what we said. We want to do what you said because we believe God is with you. And I want to surrender instead of fulfilling my own thought, even though it, it sounded better than yours. What we did, we, we swapped everything. We dropped our plan just this week. We dropped our plan and said, okay, let's do your way, prophet, because I feel like you know you are you are placed in our life and i feel like what you're saying is not from you but from god but even if if that would be you sometimes god is using your voice your 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 uh, like samuel was he hearing ailey ailey's voice so let let us follow as we started to follow just today we had a breakthrough 
We phoned up Prophet just today, just an hour ago, and we said, you know, Prophet, when we spoke, we said A, you said B. We refused A because of you, because we are we are surrendering to the lead to the lead to your leadership. And guess what happened? You were right. Our breakthrough is happened. He said, he's a very humble man. He said, I know it, this will sound strange for me, for you, but thank you so much for trusting in the voice in my mouth. Just is this, this is ended up just today. Started that is a, that is a weak process, what I'm just say, telling you. So, as I'm teaching you, the reason is powerful. The reason that my authority is still, the Holy Spirit is flowing through me. The reason is because I'm practicing. This week I humbled myself. This week I said to my wife and, and for myself, and we both agreed, forget about our plan. Let's follow what Prophet Tommy says, even if we fail. Because the, the thing what he was asking looked like we're all going to fail. All London going to fail. That's what we thought. That's how unlogical was what he said. But the Lord proved him well. And when, when I texted him, he immediately called me today and said, well done, son. So that's what Saul missed. Because sometimes your leader seems like doing something unlogical, asking you to do something unlogical, or just simply late, or just simply forgetting something. So Saul experienced this in Samuel, and what he did, he acted by his own authority. He authorized something which he wasn't allowed. And that put him on the, on the place of failure. So, but let's go back a little bit, because that actually wasn't the entering point in soul life, uh, or the, the enemy's entering point in soul life. There is already a manifestation what he did earlier. Because let's go to 1 Samuel 10, 27. 1 Samuel 10, 27. In 1 Samuel 10, 27, the Bible says, But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought no present, but he held his peace. Now, listen to this. For years, I was convinced that in 1 Samuel 10, 27, I see something great. For years, I believed that. I, I, I felt like this man, Saul, is a very humble man because he held his peace even though he'd been attacked. I was, I was convinced that was the right things. I was convinced that he did so well until I was in Nigeria and Prophet Tommy and me, we had a discussion. And he, 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 he just told me something, which I went to pray, and it makes sense. Because what, what, some, what uh, Saul did here, he didn't understand what does it mean to be a leader. And I want you to be understand what does it mean to be a leader. If you are a leader, and somebody despising you, you have to stand up and go against it because they not despising you they despising your office so when people attacking what you do in Christ you have to stand up not because you 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 loving yourself or i don't know what you have to be able to protect the office the vision the sending anointing which is has on you. 
because they not despising you as a person they think they do but what they don't understand they despising and coming against to that office to that prophetic word to that sending to that that uh, 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 task what god gave to you they going against that and you have no right to be quiet when somebody is attacking uh, God will on your life. I'm not saying fight for yourself. I'm saying be careful. Don't let nobody to hurt or attack the office, the anointing which is on you. Saul didn't understand because he was a first king, he was a beginner. Nobody taught him that Saul, you are a king. Forget about Saul. There is no Saul anymore. There is king. There is king, king of Israel, Saul, the king of Israel. You are not an individual anymore. Whatever you do, you do it in front of Israel. You're doing from the office of the, the, the king. And the reason I'm saying to you this, because I can see the calling, I can see the anointing on your life. Now, if you're not going to protect, if you're not going to stand up, if you're not going to fight for that, trust me, that office can leave you. You can work out yourself from that office, from that calling, from that mission. Saul didn't understand that the son of Belial was attacking not him, but the office which being introduced in the first time in the Bible, in the history of Israel, the office of kingship. He thought they just don't like him. Saul didn't, didn't understand I'm not anymore uh, a son of kiss. I am the king of Israel. Do you understand who you are right here? Do you have the right mindset things that you are not anymore a simple, you're not, not, not anymore a simple woman or man? You are actually brought up something, you are you holding something in your hand which is from God, that is a mission in your hand, that is an anointing on your life, that is something that you have to fulfill no matter how small you think you are. Because Saul didn't understand, he wanted to hide. I don't care if you want to hide, but the hiding period, the hiding time is finished. Because God has called you to lead. God has called you to fulfill. Now Saul, first of all, Saul didn't say they were a son of Belial. In the scripture, the Holy Spirit revealing us that they were a son of Belial. What Saul saw, Saul saw uh, brothers and sisters from Israel. That was the first mistake. Saul didn't discern that they were evil spirits, spirits of Belial. He thought, oh, just my brothers and sisters, they just, they just don't know how to handle me. And that was wrong. You have to, when you step, listen, when you're stepping in a room, the first things you do, watch through the room. And you have to discern, is there any attack against my office? Is there any attack against my callings? Anytime I go to church, anytime I'm coming even to the Zoom room, I'm watching through the Zoom. And if I feel, is somebody despising me? If I feel somebody is looked down me, in my mind, before I start to speak, I'm already praying against that. I'm not praying against you, but I'm praying against the spirit which is behind you. Why? Because I'm protecting my office. I'm protecting my anointing. Because if you're not protecting yours, it's given to you, but it can be taken from you as well. David has to fight for the kingdom. Nobody went to fight for the kingdom. David had to go to fight.
David had to go to the war to, 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 to safeguard his kingdom. So nobody will go and fight your responsibility to fight. Saul didn't see that. Saul didn't understand. These are the spirit of Belial. And because he didn't see that, he didn't act. He held peace. You cannot help peace. Jesus, when he, when he, when he felt there is attack against office, he went and, and grabbed something and he made some uh, um, uh, new arrangement in the temple in a way that people were running from him. So that when, when Saul did this, that was the entering point when the spirit of Belial actually was started to torment him. And he did not act. Now, why has why that happened? Because Saul actually had a very difficult situation. This situation is present in Rig. Let me give you a practical example. Let me be uh, very honest. Let's say I can use Ilonka and Bettina. Ilonka and Bettina, two our leaders in Rig. Myself, I'm also a leader in Rig. Now, what happening? Israel saw Samuel as a prophet. Uh, Samuel was brought up in, in front of Israel. Samuel being testified by the Spirit of God. When he prayed, uh, things are happened. He prophesied. Everybody knew is a prophet in Israel. Samuel had so many years to prove that God is with him. Are you with me? Samuel had years because this happened. He introduced the king when he was old. I'm, I'm talking about Rig. Now, Samuel brought something who called Saul a king. He did not prove himself. Nobody knew his historical life. Nobody see his life from childhood. Everybody thought, who's this guy? He did not prophesy and, except once. He didn't do or say any significant things uh, until this point. So Israel questioning itself, who's this guy? We know Samuel. We know what he did, but who's this guy? Why am I saying this? Because in rig everybody is able to accept prophet tommy why because he put so much down on the table and this is a great thing i celebrate him personally i don't think so any of you respecting more than me uh, uh prophet tommy or maybe you do in the same way of course but what i'm saying if you don't understand and if you stay with respecting Prophet Tommy, Samuel, but you fail to respect Saul, who been appointed by him, but you still want to connect to Samuel, but Samuel actually saying, listen guys, I'm pointing him. And now the son of Belial says in Israel, who is this guy? We don't know his history. We don't know nothing about him. We know Samuel. We know Prophet Tommy. Who is this guy, Peter Kiss? What does he want? He can't even speak. And you know, all the things. We don't even know him. He didn't do anything much. At least this prophet prophesied and nation being changed. So who's this soul who's actually just jumping up and down but nothing happening? Or who is Peter? Uh, 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 appointing Ilonka and Bettina. Who is these two? Why are they? And you start despising. And by doing this, you don't even realize God testing you. God is testing you. And God is, in, in this way, your career will be very short in the kingdom. Why? Because your authority won't be forever. Your authority will be temporary why 
because you're despising and you're connecting with the spirit of Belial. So we have to understand, and that's what I taught in London. I said, guys, let's celebrate Prophet Samuel, but here am I, your soul, you have to go and war with me. You have to follow me because Prophet Samuel is in distance. Now he's, he's the only solution he said, follow Peter, he will, he will guide you. In the minute you re refuse to follow me, you actually made a covenant with the spirit of Belial when you're despising me. So, and this is uh, how we, I saw this, I went uh, in different continent already, in Rig, I've been in USA, I've been in, uh, in Nigeria, I'm, I'm seeing Europe all around, and I see this as a general uh, problem, I see this as a, as a tactical uh, uh, things from the enemy. So anywhere I'm going, I have to teach this. Don't despise Saul, because Saul being appointed by Samuel. So, but some of the son of Belial said, what can this man do for us? Now, there is a great mistake again, uh, what, what uh, can, you can do. Because in 1 Samuel 11, 12, this is what happened. And the people said to Samuel, who was, who are those people who was despising our soul, our king soul? Give us those people, let us put them to death. So what happening after Saul winning his first battle, the people of Israel gathering and saying, who was those people who despised Saul in the first place? In, in verse 10, 27. So Israel knew what those people were saying. They knew that they despised small uh, soul. They knew that they did not bring uh, any presence to him. And now after Saul winning, now people saying, let's put them to death. They were ready to act because they see improvement that God is with Saul. The problem is with this, sometimes it's too late. Sometimes, uh, that's why I'm so proud of those who started to follow uh, us when, when, we, when we have no our website, when we have no church, when we have nothing. We were just in Nigeria sitting in a guest room. And some of you already were with us and some we, we, we couldn't show any evidence that God is with us. We couldn't show any uh, results that God is with us, but you were following us like I don't know who we are. And I'm so proud of that because you didn't need it for, for me to prove that God with me. You, you discerned that God is with me. The best way you can follow somebody if you're using the gift of discerning. Because if you discern, that discerning coming from your heart, and no matter what that person does, you're going to follow that person. But if you are uh, watching the result and you're deciding to follow because of the results, that will be a brain, a mind understanding. And that understanding won't be able to take you until to death. You won't risk your life because, because you have mind understanding, mind understanding. You will, you will risk your life because you understand something from your heart. So Israel needed approvement, needed to see something to say, we're going to go against the son of Belial who despised our king. And that is a problem. You can't wait for evidence, you have to hear it from heaven. You have to have revelation about who to follow. If you don't have a revelation, you'll not be able to follow for a long term. I'm, there is one person in this room who came to London 
to the conference. This person after the conference or during the conference came to me and said this. I came to London to see you with respect. I didn't came to see Prophet Tommy in this time. I came to see you. That was the person told me. Of course, the person loving Prophet Tommy, of course, I love Prophet Tommy, but that person understood something. That person understood I became a leader in her or his life. I was so proud of that person because I see he's not going to end as soul ended. Because I see the wisdom in that person. I see that person has a revelation about me and that's the reason he's following me. I see that person following me because he discerned or she discerned me, not because somebody appointed me. And that's the place and time when you can follow somebody. Now, right, let's, let's talk about your vision. Uh, does anybody have a vision? Does anybody, let me ask this way, do you have a plan? Do you have a long-term plan? Do you have a short-term plan? Uh, I guess you do. Do you have any dreams? Uh, when i asking you, do you have any dreams that you have like any things to, oh, I want to be this in the kingdom, I want to achieve this, I want to be a successful mm -hmm. uh, businesswoman, kingdom, kingdom businesswoman, I want to be a successful uh, opening a deliverance ministry, I don't know, I want to be a great prophet, I want to be anything. Do you have anything like that? I'm sure you do. If you don't, then then um, you you have to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, Holy Spirit, show me what do I have? Show me what am I? Why am, why am I here? Give me give me desires, give me dreams, give me something what I wanna die for. Give me a vision, give me a mission, uh, give me give me something what I I have to uh, uh, I have to fulfill in my life. Uh, that could be career, that could be family, that could be mission, that could be anything. That's what I call for now your vision. You must have a vision. Hands up if you don't have a vision. If you don't have a vision. Okay. Josie, Josie, is that right? Okay. Is anyone else? Okay. Paulette, okay. Okay, so you don't have a vision, you're saying. Actually, the interesting things, I was keep watching uh, Josie from the beginning um, because uh, I, I felt like I, I have to pray for you and prophesy for you so you will have a vision. We're going to pray for you, Josie, and we're going to prophesy for you uh, because you can't run without vision. You can't run without without having a plan. Paulette, Paulette, yeah, you don't have any vision, you don't have any plan, long-term term, shorter term. Uh, okay, okay. We need it. We need. You know why do you need plan, long-term plan, plan, short-term plan? Because if you have no plan, you don't know what, what do you fight for. You don't know. Uh, the reason we 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 waking up at morning and coming out from the bed be, because we feel we have purpose. We feel we have to do something in life. If you don't feel like I have to, I want to do something in life. I must do something in life. You you losing your purpose. When you losing your purpose, you can have money. You can have uh, love. You can have everything around you, but if you don't have purpose, it won't make you happy. The fish has purpose. The fish purpose is to swim. The fish purpose is to be in the sea and just swim, swim quicker than anyone else. 
The fish purpose cannot be let me just fly one day. In the minute that fish fish trying to fly, it it's just going to die. It doesn't work at all. So finding a purpose, finding a vision, it's essential in life. And trust me, uh, Jose and Paulette, God didn't send you out from the heaven to come to the earth without purpose, without vision. God send you with a reason. You do have a reason. You do have a purpose uh, in, in this life. So stay with us, both of you, please stay with us because we're not going to end this session without praying for you and, and prophesying for you. Uh, right, so we must have a vision and must know our purpose. But listen to this, those who has a vision and purpose, I'm telling you now, you're going to lose it. God is going to break it. You're going to say, maybe not in this way, I'm just saying my way, please understand me. I don't think so, I was right. Oh, uh, maybe I was wrong, it's not for me. It's going to happen to you. Because God is testing our vision. God is confronting our vision. Because if you have a vision and you are so strong, uh, that that's like this cup. If this cup is not is intact, the water is not coming out. If I break this cup, the water will come out. If I turn ups and down, the water will come out. So your vision is nice in your mind, intact, working well, but is in your mind, doesn't produce any anything around you. But when God is breaking it, when it's turning ups and down, that's when the anointing is coming through you. Listen, Moses, Moses thought, thought I had an understanding, who am I? He said, I am the guy who going to uh, bring freedom to Israel. Here is this military government. I'm going to break it. Now, that's, that was his vision. Was he right? Certainly, he was right. But when he tried to execute the vision what he had, what happened? He ended up running away. If this happened to Moses, it will come to you. Why? Because when he ran away and he spent 40 years, God bless you, Kimberly, we love you so much. And uh, just watch back the recording. Uh, so when Moses ran away, he learned something and he experienced something which was necessary to be able to go back. And God sent him back. What I'm saying, I know you want to start. I know you might start it already. I know you tried, but if it didn't work, I celebrate you. I celebrate you because what happened to you, nothing more than what happened to Moses. Because Moses just simply been refused. Moses just messed up because Moses didn't understand and tried to do with his power. But the Bible says not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. So Moses tried to fulfill with his power. So he killed somebody and he had to run. And he was so disappointed as you are in this room because he thought God didn't back up me. But God didn't back up you because God wanted you to lose yourself. God wanted you to be break in pieces. Because when you are break in pieces, that's the time when you have no, no might, you have no power. The only thing you can stand you on your feet is the Spirit of God in that burning bush. 
But the burning bush is so far, far from, from your vision. By the time you meet with the burning bush, bush you are miles away from, 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 the, from your vision. Because your vision is in Egypt, that you're going to uh, uh, fail the, the government of Egypt. Here is your vision, but now you're standing alone. Do you hear me? You're standing alone without sources. You're standing alone, uh, getting into the age because 40 years might be gone. You're standing alone without any help. You're standing alone without any plan anymore because the plan you had is didn't work. So now you're confused and you're watching yourself and you said, I thought this is I am, but looks like I'm not that person because that didn't work when I tried. So what is happening to me? Nothing happened to you. God went to break your vision for the, to pieces. And this is necessary. Because by losing your vision, by, by losing that vision what you had, you're realizing that vision can be not fulfilled by me. If you not come and act God, then that vision is going to be just a dream. It will never work. And this is a lesson in life. Joseph. Joseph had a dream. In his dream, everybody was bowing down to him. He's ended up in a pit. He's ended up being sold as a, as a slave. He's ended up in a prison. Why? Because God had to take away the vision, had to broke him, had to put him in a prison. And when he was ready, when the time was ready, God said, can I just remind you for your vision? Can I give back to you your vision? Can I fulfill now your vision? Because you were so ready to tell to your brothers and sisters that this is how it's going to happen. But that wasn't the time. It wasn't, wasn't the, you understand your, your vision, but you did not understand the method. So please don't be discouraged because the method look like you have no vision. The method took away your vision. Nothing happened, just you didn't understand the right method. How God is operating. Look at this. Uh, there is two Adam in the Bible. The first Adam is, as we know, the first created man on the earth. That's Adam. The second one is according to the scripture, Jesus. Watch the first Adam, first Adam. Now, first of all, I want to emphasize something. Adam, uh, Michaela says, this is how I feel. I actually felt, the, when, when, when I was speaking, I felt the Spirit of God is really uh, uh, on you and talking to you. Uh, which, which is amazing. I, I'm glad you, you, you felt as well. Uh, right, so that's, that's so great. Anyway, so this is the first Adam. First Adam uh, had something uh, which, is, which is very pressure for me. The first Adam had a revelation from God. Nobody heard that revelation, just he. What was the revelation? This is a garden. Look after the garden. You can eat all the fruits, but don't touch that one. Can I tell you, when this uh, instruction, this vision was given to Adam, the wife wasn't there yet because the wife was created after uh, Adam and God spoke. After they had a conversation, the next scripture, those scriptures says, and then uh, 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 he find out God, the man shouldn't be alone. So that should be a, a woman for, for, for next to the man. But the woman was not present, wasn't even existing when Adam received his vision. 
Are you with me? Now, what does that mean? The woman had a second-hand vision. What is second-hand vision? Second-hand vision, when you're not hearing directly from God, but you're hearing from somebody who you, who you trust. In this case, a, Eve didn't hear this revelation from God. If you see the scripture, Adam has the first-hand revelation and Eve had heard from Adam the revelation. That's what the Bible says. Now, what happens uh, very often with the second-hand revelation, when the time is comes, and the challenge is there, it's very hard to keep the revelation when it's just second hand. So God had to convince you. Just now, this is what happened. I was giving out a revelation about what I said just in the next uh, uh, past 10 minutes. Michaela, I, I, I was watching he, her and I felt this goes to her. Now, Michaela heard a second-hand revelation. But as she was hearing, the Holy Spirit convinced her and upgraded the second-hand revelation to a first-hand revelation. So now what I said is she's not believing me anymore, but she's believing the Holy Spirit. Remember when Jesus was speaking uh, in, in Somalia, People said, now we're not believing to Jesus because of you, woman. We're believing because we have first-hand revelation from Jesus. That's when the Holy Spirit convincing you. The best teaching is what you can uh, be participate when somebody teaching you and the Holy Spirit testifying you. Because then you're upgrading yourself to, from the second-hand revelation to the first-hand. That's what happened with Michaela just now. And that's the purpose of doing teaching sessions. My hope is that whatever I'm saying, the Holy Spirit grabbing, putting in you, moving you, and making as a first-hand revelation to you. Now, if had a second hand revelation. Now Satan going to Eve. Is God really said you cannot eat from the trees? Uh, we know the story. Eve couldn't held the vision. She became uncertain. So she's going to her his her husband and giving him a fruit and said eat but what eve eve did he actually attacked the vision what adam has eve was attacking a vision what adam has and guess what happened adam didn't protect the vision. Adam said, okay, if it's in your hand already, let's eat. He lost his vision. Remember what I said, soul, soul didn't understand that the son of Belial is actually attacked at my office. Adam didn't see the snake he saw the wife. And because of that, he lost his office. Adam lost his vision and lost his office. Why? Because he see a wife. He didn't see the snake. If Eden, because when, when God comes, Adam says, because of the wife. That tells me he didn't see the reason. He didn't see the snake. You know why you're struggling? Because you're not discerning. The reason you're struggling because you don't see the spirit behind the acts. 
The reason you don't have breakthroughs because you're not discerning and seeing behind uh, the environment and do you do not understand there is that old snake, there is that spirit of Belial who's attacking my vision. And all I have to do, say, no, Satan, I know who I am. I know my gift. I know my calling. And I am not going to eat. I am refused to eat because God said you should not. But when people can stop you, people can speak out you from your vision, that means you're not holding strong enough your vision. When people can come and say and despise you and you believe in them, that means that vision is not strong enough in you, has to break it again so God can put again together. And if it's not st strong enough again, God will break it again until it's not strong enough, massive enough to stay against any accusation any words, even if it's your own wife, even if it's your own husband, your family members, your pastors, your brothers, your sisters, you're not going to angry with them, but you have to be strong enough to say to God, God wasn't my wife. The woman who you gave me, I'm not blaming her, but I see finally the snake behind it. Because Adam missed to see the real enemy. He didn't understand that my wife being deceived. He was angry with the wife. And by that, he missed the responsibility to look after the garden. Don't be angry with men. Don't be angry with circumstances. Circumstances are side effects what happening in the spiritual realm. Darling, you've been attacked by the snake. Your office, your vision being attacked by the snake. But the good news is God allowed it. Because once you lose it, once you lose it, you know the way you eat. And the good news is, there is a grace God will give you. God is going to give back to you. And you're learning now, I'm going to protect it. You're learning now, I will never fight with men again. I will never blame my wife. I will never blame my leader. I will never blame nobody in the garden but you, snake. You learn how to do spiritual warfare after this. You learn how to, how to fight, not against flesh and blood, not against circumstances, but fight against that snake. Can I give you a great example? Because that was the first Adam. Now the second Adam has a vision as well. The second Adam one day went to pray to the mount. He took three disciples. Now the three disciples being present, they were sleeping by the way. Uh, but they were present at least. And the second Adam had a vision. That vision was, Jesus, you're going to die in a certain way. You're going to suffer and they're going to crucify you. That's what Elijah and Moses came to tell him. You all know the scripture, right? That was his vision. He got a vision. Of course, Amishana, God bless you. Love you so much. Uh, so he had a vision. Now Jesus, a second Adam, had a vision. And I told you, your vision is going to be attacked. Look at what happened with the second Adam. Uh, Matthew 16, 22. Jesus is sharing his vision with the disciples. Look at what the disciples saying. So Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Jesus sharing his vision. I received it from my father. Same way as Adam received the vision from the father. 
Jesus saying, this is my vision. Peter saying, this is not happening to you. And rebuked him. Took aside and began to re rebuke him. God forbid. God forbid. This must not happen to you. And look at what the second Adam does. Oh, I love Jesus so much. That man was sharp. That you couldn't play with Jesus. There's finally somebody seeing the snake behind the person. Because this Jesus, after Peter said, seemed so lovingly, uh, uh, sounded so protectively. But Jesus, watching Peter and discerning the situation and says, I know you. Get out of my way, Satan. Everybody, the 11 disciples were watching Jesus and says, we, we thought you and Peter had a conversation. But you're not talking anymore to Peter. You're talking with Satan. Because nobody realized that Jesus had to protect the vision. What was the vision? I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer. Now the enemy, the snake, came, same as went to, to Eve, and now went to Peter, and now Peter is, took the fruits and then went to the husband and said, eat it. Now Peter went to Jesus and said, must not happen to you. And Jesus finally says, nothing wrong with you, Peter, but I want to confront right now Satan behind you. Because not you are who's talking, but Satan is the one who's talking. The, 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 the snake couldn't hide. Why? Because Jesus did right there and then a spiritual warfare. He said, we're not going away. He was not like Saul, who held in peace. You see, that's what I'm saying. He was not held in peace. Jesus said, I rebuke, I rebuke you right now. I don't care, Peter, if you're offending. I don't care. I'm not against you, Peter, because I love you. But the spirit behind you, let me just deal with that right now. And the reason you, you fail, the reason you feel hurt, because you didn't see that momentum. But don't worry, nobody see in the Bible until, uh, I mean, the first Adam didn't see, the second one spotted out immediately. And this is what the second Adam said, and we must hear what he said. Um, I don't know which translation I have. He turned to Peter and said, go Get out of my way, Satan. You are a danger. Can you hear what Jesus said? I want you to hear this. Because your master, our prophet, the kings of kings, the lord of lords, the, the, the one who has all the power, he said, I am in danger. You, you, you are danger to me. Jesus identified this sentence as a danger. And you think when somebody despising you, you think that's okay. When Jesus is himself calling that a danger. But you think you are greater than Jesus and you think that's okay, that's fine, I will, I'll be fine with it. The reason you are not fulfilling who you are because people, spirits, if you we want to be wise, spirits despising you and attacking you. And that's a danger. Why is it dangerous? Because you're losing the vision what you got from God. If Jesus would be the first Adam he would turn to Peter and, Pete, and he would say to Jesus, he would say to Peter, finally, you are my best disciples. You really love me. You don't want me to die. You know what? You're going to be my bodyguard. 
that's what that's what we would do to first aid them but this one said your words sound sweet your attention sounds so protective but even though it's honey i see that old snake from the garden so now you do need discerning you do need discerning darling you know why because sometimes your loving husband your loving wife thinking i'm protecting my darling i'm protecting my family actually speaking out to you who you are speaking out to you from your vision not because they don't like you because they might be deceived by the enemy but that's what i said Saul had to understand Samuel is a human being. I am a human being. Hear me, I can be wrong. I can be wrong. I can easily, if I'm not operating in a spirit, I can easily despise you. But you cannot be angry with me. If you angry with me, you will never get back to the office. You have to be angry with the snake who attacked me. And you have to fight with that snake. First of all, you went to my apostle. Now I am going to attack you first of all for that. Now after my apostle, you come to me as well. Let me attack you twice today, not just once. That's what that's 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 when when you understand that you're not fighting flesh and blood. But what we do? We're not fighting twice with the enemy. We fight, we're fighting three times with human beings. And when you're fighting with human beings, you actually didn't solve anything. But the second Adam, he saw this. He saw this and he acted. Now, okay, I have to shorten this teaching. Uh, you agree with me, Ru, because you already heard the teaching. Is still so long. We, we had two hours on that day, right? But then oh. I have, you know, I have such a heart for my fellow Rig family. I'm like, yeah, let's stay. Let's go to the <laughs> end. Let's write it out. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, right. Okay, so... Listen, I, I know, I see, and I sense in the potential, the high level of potential in you. I, I, I can just clearly sense it. But, again, your vision, your mission, your life is going to be tested. It's going to be, you're going to break. And that's absolutely great. Because uh, the Bible says, uh, Joseph uh, being uh, tested by God. Why? A book of Psalm 105, he sent a man ahead of them, that was Joseph, he being sold as a servant. That doesn't fit the vision what Joseph had. His feet were fixed in change, in chains. That doesn't fit the vision. His neck was put in an iron band. That doesn't fit the vision. Till the time when his word came true, he was tested by the word of the Lord. So, why you have to be so careful to judge anybody in your environment, even your leader? Because you don't know if your leader is under a testing period, or he might just simply punish by God. Because how Joseph's life went looked like God is punishing him. Especially in the Old Testament tomb. With the old traditional Jewish understanding, if you are in a prison, if you are if you are a slave, if you've been sold, if, if your life is disaster, that means you are a sinful man. Because you are not a not not you are not a head, uh, you are a tail, right? That means you are under cursed. Nobody is under cursed unless do something. So Joseph looked like he's under curse. Joseph's life looked like is a disaster. 
be very slow to judge your leader's life, others' life, your own life. Maybe that's the hardest one. Your own life. Be very slow to judge your own life. Why? Because you might misinterpreting your own life. You feel like uh, my neck is in chain, my hand is, uh, is in bands, but maybe God is just testing you. Maybe the word of God is just testing you, is just working on you. So you have to stop judging your environment, your, your, the people around you, and stop judging yourself and understanding what happening to you by the revelation, not by the circumstances. This is what the Holy Spirit of the Lord told me. You remember the wise men who went to follow the star and find Jesus. You know how they followed, how they find Jesus? Because they were reading from the circumstances. The star was one of the circumstances which being set up so they find Jesus. But finding Jesus identifying Jesus in your life, reading by the circumstances, is called magic. You cannot rely on circumstances. There is a, you can find uh, a Jesus by reading stars, by reading circumstances, by, by watching what's happening to your life, but the right way to find Jesus is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will lead you to Jesus. Don't, don't do magic. Don't do juju. Because when you're identifying who you are by reading the circumstances, by reading the stars, because those magicians wasn't led by the Spirit of God, they were led by stars. And they find Jesus. But if you're reading the circumstances and have a picture about Jesus and have, a, have a, uh, uh, an understanding about Jesus' location, about yourself and how you, how you should bring gift to Jesus, if you're reading circumstances, that magic. You don't need to read the news magic. What do you need? You need the Spirit of God to talk to you who you are, who Jesus is. You have to understand by the Spirit of God. Because circumstances can misguide you. If you watch the circumstances of Joseph, or let me just call the stars of Joseph, you would say, Joseph is under curse. So magician would say, those who's reading circumstances, something to see, they would say, those who goes after their eyes, because remember, the magician, and this is Christian life, by the way, this is Christianity today, come on. Christianity today, you want to read and understand everything by your sight. Because the magician were goes after the sight. But anybody who goes after his own sight is going to misguide after a time. You cannot trust in your sight. Imagine that. The, 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 the magician following the stars. A cloudy day, they had to stop. The Spirit of God will never stop leading you. Refuse the circumstances. Refuse how the stars on the sky. Refuse, I'm going to be led, I'm going to find Jesus if there's no cloud. And if it's cloud, I will stop and I will wait and I will watch the sky. Refuse to identify who you are uh, from the circumstances. If Joseph would watch the stars around him, if Joseph would watch the circumstances around him, he would say, God refused me, God forgot me, God hates me, I am the enemy of God. If Joseph would go this way, he would never pray again a single prayer. But Joseph, by the Spirit of God, understood, no matter the circumstances, I know God 
give me a vision and I know God still can save me. How do I know this? Because Joseph, a young man, a healthy man with a healthy sexual uh, uh, desire, refused to have a woman. Why? Because he was fearing God. Why he feared God? Because he still believed God. Why he still believed God? Because he understood, no matter the circumstances, I am called. No matter the circumstances, I am going to lead Israel. I'm talking to leaders today. No matter how you feel, I don't care your state, I don't care your mistake. I will do some mistake as well, I join to you. But, we've been called to lead. And we're going to lead. Not because there are stars, not because there are signs, not because we look like, not because other people say we look like now, because we're listening to the Spirit of God and that Spirit will going to lead us, going to put us in our place. We refuse magicians, we refuse to rely on our sight, we refuse to follow anything which is our, in our sight, because anything you see is temporary, anything you don't see is forever. If you don't see yourself right now, the only reason you don't see yourself as a leader because you're going to be a leader for good, not for temporary as soul. That's why you don't see yourself. God is just, too, you are too pressured to be shown to the earth right now. In fact, you, God has to protect yourself from you, so he's hiding you. But the time will come when say, this is who you are. Don't stop believing God and don't stop believing who you are. And the test will come. Maybe the test is on you already. Right, uh, let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, first of all, I let me just pray to Josie. Uh, Lord, I'm praying for Josie and I'm blessing Josie. Uh, and right now, Lord, I'm, I'm taking out Josie from the place, from the time where he, where she is. And Lord, I'm, I'm, uh, Josie, I, I see you like you have a veil in front of your eyes. You have a veil and because of that veil, you can't see clearly. You can see uh, light, you can see something, but you can't see uh, uh, clearly uh, that what happening uh, um, on the other side on the, of the veil. But today I'm going to ask Jesus that he should remove the veil in front of, from your eyes, because you feel like you're following Jesus, you feel like you, you, you're doing your Christian life, but you feel like uh, you are in a place of confusion, you, you feel like your vision is blurry, you feel like you have some understanding, but your understanding is, is really limited and you don't understand and you don't see sharply and clearly what's happening in your life and what, what you are supposed to do. But the Lord says, daughter, today I'm going to move that whale and I'm going to uh, uh, apply that cream on your eyes which will heal your sight and you're going to see not by your natural eyes as a magician was seeing but you're going to see with your spiritual eyes because everything you're going to see is in the spirit is forever and anything you see with your sight is temporary and I hear the spirit of the Lord says for you everything you're experiencing everything you're going through is under my control I, 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 I feel like sometimes you feel or sometimes you, you 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 prayed that Lord I don't understand why is it happening to me Lord I don't feel like you are with me I don't feel like that we are we have a strong relationship but the Lord says I am I was always with you my daughter and I'm going to lift you up and I I going to change your 
perspective of me because you're seeing me as somebody who's far away from you but actually my daughter i am in your mouth i am in your heart i am allowing things in your life that make you confused i am allowing in your life that make you unsure that i am with you or not but i am with you says the lord and anything is happening in your life it's happening with a purpose so you will see and understand who I, who am i and i will give give you a new identity that you can see who you are in me and lord i'm praying for visions i'm praying for dreams i'm praying for missions in 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 josie uh, life in the name of jesus because you sent her out with the reason you sent her out from the heaven with a mission and lord in the name of jesus i rebuke and before Josie, before we even started, I told you before we started, I was watching the room. I watching everybody in the room before we were starting. And I'll be super honest with you. When I was watching uh, you, I saw in the room, uh, please don't be scared. I saw in the room uh, the enemy. I saw in the room behind you the enemy. And when I saw the, the enemy behind you, I knew that I have to pray against it. I have to rebuke it because the enemy is trying to attack you and try to believe you that you are just nobody. Try to make you believe you are you are not created for success but for failure. But right now, can I? I I'm just stepping in the spirit into your room, and I just clearing the atmosphere. I'm just clearing the atmosphere in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, I'm asking to shift that atmosphere in, in, in Josie's room. Because that atmosphere tried to tell and convince Josie that she is not worthy, she is not ready, she is not made for success, she is not mere made for a mission. But right now, I'm casting out that old snake from that room. I'm casting out for that for that spirit of Belial from that room. And I'm prophesying to Josie in the name of Jesus that she will get what is she supposed to be fulfilled she's not going to fail in fact i'm right now i'm praying for hope i'm praying for vision and i'm praying for new and new uh, uh power to renewing the mind and and feelings and thoughts in Josie's life and Lord I'm praying for visitations Josie the spirit of the Lord telling you uh, when reminding me when Solomon stepped to be a king then God visited Solomon and told Solomon this is who you are and I'm going to bless you and you're going to rule Israel I feel like I have to pray for for, for in your life for visitation Lord, I'm asking you to visit Josie in a, in a form of vision, dream, uh, maybe from, from, from a scriptural revelation, um, but you have to visit uh, Josie. And I, I, in the name of Jesus, I'm making a way for this visitation. And I'm praying against all the, the evil powers which try to hold back this visitation, all the monitoring spirit which is in their room. In the name of Jesus, I just uh, make blind those monitoring spirit. I'm just paralyzing them in the name of Jesus so they cannot move, they cannot see anymore. And they, I, I'm asking confusion for, for those monitoring spirit in Josie's life. In the name of Jesus, I'm Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to visit her, to give her an identity to give her visions to give her hope to give to make her a person who's coming out from bed because of you and Josie I see you in the future I don't know I can't identify the time but I see you in the future that you every morning you're waking up and the first thing you do Lord I'm here Lord I'm ready for the mission Lord I'm ready to speaking to me and the Lord is reminding me I don't know if you read the good morning Holy Spirit when Benny Hinn every morning he's open up his eyes and says good morning Holy Spirit because he understood that the Spirit of God is reality for him and the Spirit of God has planned with his life in a, the same grace I'm asking you Jesus that uh, uh, Josie should 
wake up every morning with the spirit of God, with the experience of the presence of God, and she will understand that she has a mission, she has a vision, what she has to fulfill in the name of Jesus. So Lord, I'm blessing Josie in the name of Jesus, and uh, I'm praying for this vision, for this visitation in her life, and I'm safeguarding and I'm covering right now Josie uh, under your blood, Jesus, and I'm saying and I'm prophesying she's going to be renewed, she's going to be a different person, the same way as Saul became a different person when, she, when he entered to the companies of prophet. The, the spirit which is in this room should fall upon Josie in the name of Jesus. She should see and hear and experience from now on the goodness of God. And Lord, I'm celebrating you because I feel the joy that she's going to receive and enjoy the spirit of God same as we do in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, I'm just praying for, for, for Paulette as well. Paulette, I feel you have a very high level of, uh, what's the right word, to be able to focus on the Word of God. I feel like you, 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 you have like, let me just put it in this way, this is how I understood. I feel like many people have two ears. I feel like you have four or five ears. That's how sharp you are. That's how hungry you are for the word of the God. And that's how quick you are to hear the word of the God. And the Lord says, because you are eager to hear my word, because you are eager and respecting me to, and my word to hear it and receive it. The Spirit of the God says, I'm going to be quick and I'm going to be receive your word as well. I'm going to hear your prayer as well. And uh, uh, Lord, the Lord says, uh, Paul, uh, uh, Paul at, uh, I'm going to make you a prayer warrior. I'm going to prove you that you're going to pray, you're going to ask something, and the next day I'm going to fulfill. I feel like the Spirit of the Lord is going to convince you how powerful is are your words. I feel like the, the, right now I see the Lord is taking out your tongues and give you a fiery tongues. And, and these fiery tongues, anytime you're going to pray and release things, I feel like the, the, the power of Pentecost is going to be present. I feel like you're going to be experience the drunkness of the Spirit. You're going to be experience the power of the Spirit and the Spirit of God will prove that you are a prayer warrior. That Spirit of God will prove you that you say something and you're going to see the fulfillment because you you take care of the word of the God. I don't know you, but I see for years that how much you, you kind of have the fear of God and uh, how much you're respecting the word of God. I really sense that inside you, that you put very high, you valued very high the word of God in your life. And anybody who's hiring and valuing, valuing the word of God so high, the word of God will value that person so high. So I see your weight, your weight is so heavy in the spirit. Your weight is so heavy. That means you are, you are full with gold and silver. You are very valued in the kingdom. You are very rich in the kingdom. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, anything starting in the spirit and manifesting on the earth. So the Lord says because of your richness in the spiritual realm, is going to manifest on the earth. I see wealth is coming to you. I see unexpected finances coming to your life. I see unexpected sources will come to your life and these streams coming to your life and going to feed you and your family. And God is says, I'm going to take care of you and of your family and I'm going to bless your family more than you think. 
in the name of Jesus, Lord. And the hunger, you already have a hunger for the word of God, but that hunger is going to increase, going to increase and increase. And you're going to be a woman like, like somebody who's going to study and eat the word of God like day and night, night and day. And you're going to be full with revelation, with joy, with revelation from the scripture. And those things are going to change your life. And those things are going to bring you uh, a new, new visions and new understanding who you are. Because you're being called to break the darkness or uh, the power of the darkness by your words. So the Lord says, be careful with your mouth because I want to use your mouth. Be very slow with speaking and think twice what you're saying because I'm going to sanctify your words and your mouth. And whatever you say, I'm going to bless it. So Lord, I'm praying for in her life to to be to be double careful what she's speaking because you're going to news her as your mouth what she's going to say you're going to testify it in the name of jesus i'm just blessing paul at right now and lord i'm praying for this prophetic words for this vision to come true in her life in the name of jesus amen and amen thank you so much sense to to being with us today it was an honor to 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 being with all of you and again listen back the teachings because you are potential leaders you are leaders already you are somebody who has to understand how to surrender yourself how to follow your leaders so and because god doesn't want to give you a temporary uh uh, a kind of career God wanna establish you. Be blessed, uh, and then I'm going to uh, uh, put this teaching to my YouTube channel, uh, and uh, then. But also, I believe Brittany going to email uh, to everybody uh, this teaching. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you. Love you all so so much. And uh, can't wait to see you again. It was actually so nice to see you finally. Love you all. Thank you, Apostle. We love you, Apostle. We love you, Apostle. We love you. We love you. God bless you. God bless everyone. We anoint you. God bless you. Get rigged. Bye-bye. Get rigged. God bless you. Get rigged. Bye-bye.